Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Digging Deeper number 222. The purpose of our Digging Deeper moments is to take God's Word to God's world, and we're so happy that you've joined us. If you would, please take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Last week, we began a series called Lost in Translation, and we saw that just as things can be lost in translation when you go on a trip to a foreign country, things can be lost in translations of the Bible. And the thing that we are looking at in this series is whether or not something has been lost when some modern translations of the Bible, such as the New Revised Standard, translate the first verse of the Bible as, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, instead of, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Last week, we also saw that we come into the Bible with one of three views of creation which can influence our translation and interpretation of the Scriptures. Those who hold to an old earth naturalist view tend to ignore Scripture when it comes to the origins of the world and the universe and disregard the Bible. Those holding to the old earth creationist view believe God created the universe but tend to reinterpret what the Bible says if it disagrees with today's science. And the young earth creationists tend to reinterpret science to fit their, inter their interpretation of Scripture. Now hear me carefully. This means that all of us, all of us, if we are not careful, can allow our existing beliefs about origins to influence how we translate and interpret Scripture. And what's at stake here is what the Bible is telling us about the creation of the universe. If the modern translation is correct, the Bible is telling us that God began His creative activity with a watery earth already in existence. If the traditional translation is correct, the Bible is telling us that God created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. The Revised Standard Version translates Genesis 1 and 2 as the following. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. This translation tells us that when God began creating, the earth already existed and it was filled with water. And what we read in the rest of Genesis chapter 1 is really how God brings about order to a chaotic world. He's not really talking about the creation at all. The King James Version does a really good job reflecting the traditional translation when it is translates the first two verses in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. According to this translation, God began creation by creating the heavens and the earth, and when He did, He created the earth incomplete, empty, and covered with water. This means that God started with nothing, then created something called the heavens and the earth, and the rest of the things spoken of being created in Genesis 1 show God completing the heavens and the earth and filling them. These are two very different scenarios of creation. Now there are three main reasons why I believe that the traditional translation is the correct one. And as I've studied this text in Hebrew, I've consciously attempted to clear the mud off of my feet, that is to put aside my current beliefs about origins. And I've done this by hearing and addressing the main arguments in favor of the modern translation, in favor of the translation I don't agree with. This should tell you that right up front that I don't agree with the New Revised Standard Translation of Genesis 1-1 as in the beginning when God created. But I have studied their arguments and the arguments that are made in favor of this translation as objectively as possible, and I find these arguments to be wanting. First of all, I find the timing of the drift away from the traditional translation extremely suspicious and at worst deceptive. For over 1800 years, almost every translation and every translator translated Genesis 1, 1 through 2 as, in the beginning God created the heaven, heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. There were a couple of exceptions to, these translate, to this translation, but they're all outliers, and their arguments, however, are still used today. But the burden of proof is upon those who wish to retranslate Genesis 1-1 because the overwhelming opinion of those who have translated the Scriptures has been, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, the majority can be wrong. But that doesn't mean that the majority is wrong. And if it is, you have to show me the money, honey. You have to show me the reasons why you would make the claim that the traditional translation is wrong. And so as I've studied this, I ask myself, 
why this shift away from the traditional translation of Genesis 1-1 to the modern one? Did scholars wake up one day and say, gee, we've gotten this all wrong for 1,800 years. This is how we should have been translating Genesis 1-1, in the beginning when God began to create. Did they stumble upon some new information that led to their conclusions? Or was something else occurring at the time when they began suggesting a change in translation? No, they didn't find new information. And the arguments that they made are the same ones that are being made today. But what has changed is people and translators today seem to be more receptive to these arguments than they were when they began. And it just seems fishy to me that this shift in translation began about the same time that scientists began moving away from the belief that the features of our earth were created suddenly through various catastrophes like volcanoes and earthquakes and were moving to, a grad to accept the gradual means of development of, evolu of evolution. Ironically, there is a movement among scientists today that's not well known, but it is a movement that's growing to return to more catastrophic causes for the features of our, of our planet today. But in the 1800s, the drift was towards evolution and to a more gradual way of looking at things. And a number of theologians began to look for ways to reconcile the Genesis account of creation with the various evolutionary theories that were developing. And one of these suggestions was to alter the translation. Now, this isn't a series about the pros and cons of evolution and the evolutionary theories that were emerging. The question we're seeking to answer in this series is whether or not the modern translation of Genesis 1-1, as in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, is based upon the text or upon other factors and other influences. And it seems to me that the timing of the shift away from the traditional translation to the modern one is suspicious at its best. And it points to an influence acting upon these translators who translate Genesis 1-1 as in the beginning when. But we're out of time, and so next week we'll begin to look at the second reason I believe that the traditional translation of Genesis 1-1 is the best and best represents the original biblical text. And I hope to see you then. If this lesson's helped you, please share it with a friend, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or check out our Sunday morning live podcast on either Apple or Spotify. And hey, if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please help us by doing so. I hope to see you next week.